everybody Welcome to the party with a nuts head It's just a rap thing And we're back with episode 84 The Antonio Brown episode The uh, cover model episode Of the Sounds of Struggle I am uh, no longer concussed Chris Parrish I am currently rehabbing my entire body when I and uh yeah we have chosen antonio brown the uh probably the best wide receiver in the nfl right now uh, especially on this exact day yeah um well best wide receiver in the off season he receives things wide in his ass well that's a personal choice and that's why he made the cover model. Yeah, and um, he's the official it, cover athlete of the Madden 19 video game. Madden 19. Old enough to drink, except for in the States. Well, I mean, not legally, but yeah. yeah. Uh, it's more of a Canadian thing. Um, that's why we're better, because we can drink well, alcohol one younger. One of the many reasons. Um, speaking of covers what would you say is your favorite cover for a video game are we talking any video game any video game like sport video games sports well, let's go okay. sports because you know mario tennis why <laughs> oh that's a lot of bright colors and it's it's fun to look at. Bright colors? That, that's what yeah. turns your turns your on your... Yeah. Turn, turns my crank, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're doing players? Probably... Okay, what's your favorite Madden or NHL, like EA Sports cover? Because, I mean, I guess those NHL are NHL the... 16 with the uh, taste of the uh, cup. That's mm -hmm. good. Um, Does it also kind of like bug you that it should have been Taze and Kane before? Kane yeah, before Kane went all rapey and whatnot. Decided to go like Mike Tyson on, you know, cab drivers? Was that it? I thought it was the whole rape allegation. Oh, uh, well, that too. Wh whichever one it was, yeah. He also went full Enzo. Yeah. Full Enzo on a cab driver. He went Enzo Amori on some girl. Very good. Um, either that or 2000, I think 2009 was uh, also <laughs> him. He put a certified seeds on people. Yeah. I also liked, was it 2000, 2008... I think had uh, Steven Stamkos. Mm -hmm. um, the most iconic one, honestly, that I played the most, NHL 2003 with uh, Jerome McGinley. I played that one for PS2 you know, you, so very, very see, much. See, I like the fact that Jerome McGinley was on there, not because he was a flame, but, you know, a fellow St. Alberton was on the cover of an EA video game. St. Alberta. St. Alberton. Um... But I also, I'm a big fan that, you know, uh, Connor McDavid is bringing that, you know, you brought that back with uh, last year, the NHL. He's not from St. Albert. No, but, you know, he put the Oilers jersey back on there. Oh, fair enough. And this year, coming up for 19, you can get the Legend Pack, which has a uh, fucking... Gretzky, I know. That's but, the one. But at the same time, it's nice to have somebody else, other than Wayne Gretzky, that could actually make the Oilers a marketable team outside of, you know, like that... Edmonton, yes. Canada. Um, so, like, other people, like, even playing in, like, Timbuktu, if they had an Xbox or PlayStation 4, could play NHL 18, and they go, like, oh, who are these Edmonton Oilers they speak of? Oh, yes. this Connor McDavid is very good. Oh, this Connor McDavid is also the best player in hockey right now. Oh, can he play for the Edmonton Oilers? I need to check out more Edmonton Oilers games. On a completely unrelated note, this is a very serious question. If anyone out there has a PlayStation 4, NHL 18, and knows how to delete custom-made hockey teams, hit me up on the, any of the social media. Ooh, I can probably actually show you how to do that. Because I've made too many teams, and I want to get rid of someone, I can't figure it out. I've made far too many teams. I've made 13 of them. You know what, next time I'm over, I'll show you. Okay. Because I think I can figure that one out. You don't have to ask people. But if anyone knows... Well, we got this. Okay, but anyways... Um, this just didn't. So Antonio Brown, I know cover guy. Yeah, um, probably going to be a top five pick for fantasy football in every fantasy football league. I picked him for the CFL. Um, not gonna help me much, but I picked him. No, um, I don't even know what team would have his rights in the CFL. No. I don't think if he'd ever go to the CFL because he's too busy being awesome in the you NFL. Know what's happening in CFL though? I'm about 
to get to that. Well, why don't you tell us that? How about I invoke my reason to talk about the CFL, same way that Terrell Owens invoked his 10-day clause with the Eskimos to offer him a contract, brother. Brother, brother. Yeah. That's exactly where we're going here. Exactly. And that's all we have to say about that. But that's exciting. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see him soon. And a lot of people will could say, I mean, this isn't... Uh, a Kawhi Leonard situation where he gets traded and doesn't necessarily want to play for the team. Terrell Owens invoked a 10-day contract to get our 10-day rule for the Eskimos offer him a contract because he wants to play in the CFL. And the Eskimos put him on his negotiation list because they actually would want to sign him. So there's actually some agreement between the two to actually play. Yeah. And then we get a deal done here, so... Also, other good news. Terrell Owens uh, could be an Eskimo in 10 days or less. L- less than 10 days, yes. Well, now yes. But, but uh, you know what else is really good news? Nobody claimed the last 50-50. Yeah, so like, isn't that like 71000 Yep, yeah, August 2nd. The jackpot starts at $71,000. Yeah. That's a good thing. Well, yeah, but what about, like, wasn't week one at like 100 and some grand? Yeah, it's because uh, I think Bel Air Direct donated $100,000 to it. Yeah. Should have won that one, by the way. Do you fucking think? Just saying. I mean, should have won. I tried. Just saying. Um, but you, you know who is striking it rich right now? Who that? Everyone who's signing free agents here, like still, like. Uh, you know, Kawhi Leonard, if he would have signed his Mac contract with the Toronto Raptors, who he's now traded to. Yeah, could, how about that? Could be striking and rich by uh, five year 190. That would be the max contract he could get. Yeah, so but he doesn't want to play in Toronto, so I guess he doesn't want to make $190 million. So. Because he's not going to get. He's not going to get that if he goes to LA. DeMar like LeBron De- is making all the money. DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. A franchise player with Toronto, been there 10 years. He has, like, leads almost every category for the Raptors for points and games played, etc., etc., etc. Just got traded. For Kawhi Leonard, though. Yes. But if Kawhi Leonard doesn't want to play, but if he, how terrible of a trade is it? If he does, it's, it's a win. If he does, yes, but it sounds like right now he doesn't but want to. But at the it. same time, okay... What has DeMarc DeRozan done for the Raptors in the postseason? They... Got him to the conference final twice? Yeah, conference final. But for a team that won the East this year, don't you think they should have went to the final? Don't you think they should have won? I agree. I mean... It's just classic Toronto teams. Fucking shit up. I also think, too, this Toronto Raptor team, that the core they had wasn't good enough to get where they wanted to be, and that was the NBA final. Well, speaking of that... And Insanity is, so, ex- is doing the same thing, expecting different results. They have tried for a couple of years now with the same core guys. It's not getting done. You had to make a change. And speaking of that, because of this trade, suddenly now the Raptors have gone from 60-1 to 1 odds to win next year to 20-1. to 1. Well, of course. It's Assuming... That Leonard wants to play. Exactly. Um, so, to break down the trade, it's Gary Leonard going... To from the, the Toronto Spur- Raptors. From the Spurs. With some other guy named last name Green. I'll just say Leonard and Green goes to the Raptors. Leonard Leonard Green. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Green Leonard. Uh, uh, for DeMar DeRozan, uh, Jacob Postal, which is like, a, I believe it was a first round pick a couple years ago for the Raptors. Sure. And then a pro- uh, protected first round pick. So, if that pick would be from... Uh, a f- uh, productive first round pick so if that pick was between the order of 1 and 20 Toronto would get it therefore San Antonio would get the next 2 years of second round picks but if it's 21 or latter in the first round Spurs would get that pick instead yes so um, yeah um, honestly as of right now it sounds like the Spurs won but again if but, Leonard I mean, a lot of the reports size. are saying Leonard doesn't want to play there. Yeah. Leonard ha- actually has never come out and said it yet. Yeah. So, so if well, Leonard signs, Raptors won. Well, he is signed. Well, okay. So he if, signed for one sorry, more year. If, if he ends up wanting to actually sign an extension and wants to play there long term, then they win. 
I still think in sports, if you have a guy who's technically under contract and he says, I'm not going to play, that team should be able to hold his rights until he's allowed to play. Or at least freeze a contract so when the guy does play, they have him for whatever uh, long left in that contract. Sure. I think that should be a thing in all sports. I agree. That way, you can draw up the egotistical bullshit for players because, let's face it... Like Eric Lindros? Oh, I mean, that guy's a fucking pussy. So many different ways. Sure. I mean, wah, wah, wah. I don't want to play for the Quebec Nordiques. Trade me. Wah. Fucking prima donna. Tell me how you really feel. I was so happy when Stevens knocked him the fuck out. Me too. It's because I like Stevens. Yeah. Well, Favorite defenseman. So, um... Yeah, that's definitely all we're going to talk about basketball. No, that's it's what? not. There's one other thing. Really? What else? You and I, we're going to go try over a basketball team. I don't want to. Y- yeah, you do. Why? Didn't you hear? Next summer, Edmonton's getting a basketball team. As part of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. It starts 2019 in the summer. And there are six teams that are in this league. Can I be like the version of Drake where I'm just there and instead of making shitty music, I just drink a lot of beer? Well... That's what we do anyways, because there's no way that us couple of white guys are And I could be like, welcome to the six-pack! Yeah, neither one of us are playing, because... By the way, it's out, it. I need another one! Let's face it, we're both white. Neither one of us are playing, we're riding the pine. We can get drunk while we're riding the pine. Hey man, Jacob Portal just got traded to the Spurs. Don't care. That guy is white as you so, get. That guy's whiter than, like, Appalachian Mountains. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so... The six teams that are in this new league are the Humboldt Broncos. No. Okay. Hamilton Honey Badgers. <laughs> the Niagara River Lions. I understand that Honey Badger is like a tough animal, but my god, that is the gayest name for a fucking animal. I'm just gonna point that out. Sorry, Johnny Devine. Yeah, I'm sorry. For sorry. Just, any, anything. It's okay. just a really bad sounding name for a team. The uh, we want to sound tough, so Honey Badgers. It's because they don't give a shit. It's like... So, is the... Like, is their mascot, like, best friends with the bee from Honey Nut Cheerios? Ironic that you say that, because the Edmonton are the Edmonton Stingers. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's... That's yeah. good. Niagara River Lions. Really? The Saskatchewan Rattlers. Okay, that's the best name so far. Because it's a beer, as yeah. well as a rattlesnake. Yeah. The Guelph Nighthawks. Okay, I like Nighthawks. And... Fraserville, which I think they just had a team. I think it's Fraserville Bandits. Okay, two of those names, the uh, Nighthawks and Bandits, were lacrosse teams. So, I'm wasn't, gonna... it, wasn't it Rochester Nighthawks? Yeah, I mean, once lacrosse teams move, so it could be yeah. different cities. But yeah, it was uh, Rochester yeah. Nighthawks. But then there was also uh, so what was the last uh, the Bandits? The Bandits, Buffalo Bandits, were a team in yes. NL that actually John Defar as. The uncle played for. Yes. Um, so, anyways, six teams. One of them's in BC. One of them's in Alberta. One of them's in Saskatchewan. And three of them are in Ontario. Can't see this lasting a long time, well, so let's jump on. Let's have some fun with it. Well, I mean, you got to expect Ontario is going to be the major market here. I mean, one, the population in Canada is majorly in Ontario and Quebec. Fuck them. But the only place where you have a pro basketball team is in Ontario. So there's probably going to be more people from Ontario wanting to play and going to play. Fuck them. So, it's, well, I mean, I'm just saying it's smart to have Ontario heavy. Then you can use that. But anyways, my point is we should try it because we could technically be professional athletes in multiple sports. Okay. What color are the Edmonton Stingers? I'm going to assume black and yellow. Just because. If they go black, gold, it's white, I'm in. Okay. Same colors, we'll, we can make this work. Okay. But I'm saying we should try it. What's the worst that's going to happen? They'll say no and we just go drink? Ooh. I mean, I can't be worse at, you know, f- a free throws and shack. Exactly. Difference is, you're shorter. Yeah. No, By what? like six feet, because he's a freak of nature. I mean, I might not be good at uh, basketball, like, Barkley, but, I mean, at least when my team doesn't make the playoffs, I can 
play better. I can swing better at golf than him. Yeah, he's got a f- weird swing, eh? Oh, God. Wow. I've seen people with, st- like, strokes swing better at golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pun intended, bitch! Woo! <laughs> get it because there's strokes in golf. Oh, fuck, I didn't even get that. I thought you were just making fun yeah. of people that have you know, brain issues. No, no, no. Yeah. That, yeah, I wasn't thinking of that at all. It was oh, actually a good. pun. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm glad I explained it now to make people not take yeah. this so sensitive. You know who's good at uh, stroking and swinging? Um, oh, 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 oh. Uh, well, hmm. well, actually, that'll get me in trouble. So you go. I was going to say Bryce Harper for getting the uh, home run derby. Yeah, there we go, my boy. Yeah. My favorite home run derby champ! Yeah, and his dad looks like both Steiner brothers. At the same time. Yeah. It's impressive. It's very impressive. Yes. So, Dogface Gremlin and the great guy that knows math. 33 and two-thirds chance is what he had, and he, and he won. Huh? Um, but anyway, so uh, congrats to him. And uh, Strowman, did you hear what he said saying about the Blue Jays? Yeah, they fit of anger, But they are fucking terrible. Yeah. And that makes me fucking happy because it's fucking true. And then he had to clarify it and say, no, I'm terrible, and then we're just playing terrible. Yes. And then had to, like, yeah. You know what? I love it because it's blunt, it's honest, and let's face it. You think more people who know when they're on teams that don't play well aren't thinking the same thing? Why it's so wrong that they take so much pride in what they're doing that when they suck, they just fucking say they suck? I agree. It's like you think that Cleveland Browns are, yeah, no, we're a great team, even though we haven't won a fucking game. We still think we can turn this around. No. We have won one game in two years, this is fucking pathetic. I'm Agreed. sure they're thinking that. But everyone's like, well, oh, it's not really good if they say that. Why? Yeah, I agree. Um, from there, I have one thing about MMA, and in particular UFC. I think I know, but why don't you say it instead? That uh, Dana White's getting into, uh, gotten into a little bit of a heated thing with uh, former UFC heavyweight fighter Brendan Schaub. Oh, see, that's not what I was going to th- say. What would what, 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 you think? That you found out that the first person you saw at a UFC Live is also the same guy that wrestles on the MPW roster? Yeah, yeah, Mitch Clark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's kind of funny. And uh, in the fight, was he, like, he lost in TKOs? Cause yeah, I had no idea. And uh, I don't remember that match. I only, Honestly, I only remember the semi-main <laughs> and the main event of that entire show. Come on, Mitch. Make it famous. But, I mean, hey, I'd love to have him on and talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about the fight that we don't remember you having. Yay! But anyways, Plus six more. Um, so Brendan Schaub is a fight personality. He uh, reviews all forms of uh, um, combat sports. Yeah. And uh, except recently, for a limited time in 2018, wrestling wasn't on them. No, fair enough. In the Albert area. Yes. Yeah. Um, so anyways, he made a comment about certain uh, fighters in the UFC, and a different fighter took offense, thinking he was talking about him, which he wasn't. And Which they, fighter thought that? Uh, Stylebender. I don't even know him. He has yeah. to suck. No, he actually, he's, he's quite good. That's his nickname. Does I, he fight in the UFC? Yes. Okay. That's that's his actual uh, his his actual name is yeah. something else, but I. What, what's his actual name? I don't know. You're in your phone. Look I don't up. want to look it up. Selfish. I I am. But uh, anyways, so Dana White commented <laughs> saying that even though Brandon Shaw was a former UFC employee. Saying, you know, don't listen to these, don't listen to this moron, etc., etc., and then he just kept going off. He wouldn't leave it alone. So Brandon Schaub eventually went off and just completely humiliated him. My question is, should someone like say Dana White or to relate it more to wrestling, Vince McMahon or Triple H, should they really go off on people who are not involved with the company? Like, isn't that really unprofessional? Like, you look really pathetic and stupid. And especially if you got owned, like Dana White did, it just makes you look even worse. I think right now, guys like Dana White and Vince McMahon are just looking and getting themselves in the headlines, regardless if it makes them look good or bad. Because no bad, or even negative press is good press, right? I guess, yeah. You you know, I get, but at the same time, it's like, I'd rather you guys just focus on making your product better. Yeah, that, that's what I appreciate. Than dealing about. with these small things and making that public so people look at you. That was all based 100% a, on like a moron. misinformation. Yes. Yeah. 
But I mean, that's why I appreciate about Triple H and Stephanie Man. Who's an idea? Why doesn't Brandon Shaw put Dana White on his podcast to air it all out? Boom! He's, he's yeah. offered and it's been refused. Yeah, because Dana White just doesn't like doing podcasts. No, I don't which know. it's it's fine. But uh, that's why I appreciate about you know all the McMahons, Triple H. They kind of just stay quiet unless it's to promote what they're doing. And honestly, at that stage when you're that high up, that's what you should be doing. Because you're under quite a, quite at a some thin point, mi- why, microscope. Why should it matter if people say a bad thing about you or the company? Like it, it I doesn't agree. really. Like, who cares? I mean, that happens all the time on social media. Only literally, the, literally only the morons who like need to divulge into it look like bigger idiots because of it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. My, I, my that's just my thing is that it just UFC or Dana or UFC because of Dana White. Looks kind of stupid now, because he is technically like the figurehead. And he made them look pretty dumb by doing all that. That's just that was my comment saying that. Maybe think before you fucking tweet or whatever. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, moving on. He needs to be twiddle smart, not twiddle dumb. Yes. Sure, we'll go with that. Or at least be twiddle d, not twiddle dumb. Yeah. Or twitter d, not twitter dumb. There, there we go. go. Oh, that's what I meant. There saying. it is. Long road. We gotta stop drinking before doing this. <laughs> Long road, but we got there. Uh, scenic, see. scenic tour. Yeah. So for hockey, I have, first of all, the big old Hawks trade. Yeah. Which traded uh, Hosa's contract, Hina Strosa, Osterle, and ni- 2019 third round pick to the Yodis. Yeah. For Kruger, Mackenzie, Entwistle, Jordan Malaya, and Andrew Campbell. And Sounds a 2019 like a fifth round. Malaya? Sounds like a disease. Not malaria. Oh, you got Malaya? Oh, not, you should not, say not over mal- seven. Not malaria, Malaya. I think I could be saying yeah, it wrong, I'm too. I'm just saying it. Sounds point like is, a disease. Point is, ah, I mean, I understand them dump, wanting to dump Hosa's contract. I get it. But I really like Tina Strohs in Australia. So I'm really hoping this works out in our favor. Ours being the Hawks Yeah, but favor, you guys got but, Kruger back. Yeah, yeah. But the other ones I don't really know much about, so it's. I'm hoping this works out in our favor. That's all I'm saying is I hope it does. Because Hina Stroza, I think, given a few years with po- the proper nurturing, would be a phenomenal forward. And Australia is already a solid, you know, 6 man D. Yeah, but, I mean, you can find those guys everywhere. That is not true. You cannot find them in a Jenny Craig fucking workout place. Well, have you, okay, when was the last time you were at Jenny Craig's? What Today! Was- Oh, yeah, that's in Edmonton. Nobody wants to be in Edmonton. Fair though. enough. But you know who does want to be in Edmonton? Who? Trell Owens. Yes, that is true. Yeah. That is true. Just, just going to point that out there. Oh, By the way, whoever owns 81 for the Eskimos, you should start. Give it the fuck up. Right? Uh, wait, no, it was, it was the guy who got player of the game, this past game. Uh, Dequil Williams, I think his name is. I don't care. Give it up. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't care who has it. Just get, give it up if T.O. sides because it's T.O. Oh, yeah. He'll probably take that job anyways. Um, the other things for hockey, Jets sign Truba. Oh, sorry. Jets, Truba, $3 million apart, uh, arbitration. Yeah, they haven't signed him yet, but the arbitration's going on. Uh, a couple guys have uh, accepted their qualif- or arbitration offers or qualifying offers. Just looking through, uh, you know, you know, something that's oh. actually being talked about though, right now. What's that? Um, the Oilers because they just signed Evan Bouchard, the first round pick. Hooray! Um, they're taught their the rumor is would you, uh, you know, offer a guy like Alex Hemsky a PTO? Um, my thing is, it's like, hey, if the guy can play, I don't see a problem in it because, worst case, he doesn't make the team. He doesn't make the team, and then you don't you're not paying anything. Yeah. Worst case is he plays again, or he plays well, makes can make the team, earns a spot. You know, you can help mentor a guy like Yamamoto or Puliarvi. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, why not? Like when it's a low risk, high reward. Not necessarily high reward, but I mean, you know, even if you got ten goals and thirty points, I mean, you take it. But yeah. Um, also, why not? Uh, let's see here. Uh, did the Ducks sign Henrik to five year extension? 
Um, they also, is it uh, the uh, Vegas Golden Knights signed Nosek and Flurry? Yeah. They signed both of them. That's good for them. Who, at the age of, I believe it's going to be 35, will make $7 million for three years. Yep. Um, that's very, uh, you know, interesting for a 35 year old to get $7 million a year. It is. For a goalie. That's. But I think he's going to be one of those guys that. You know, he's going to make it feel worth worth the contract. Yeah. I mean, I just, barring a big injury, I just don't see him playing any different. No. Um, former Blackhawk Hartman signs a one-year extension with the uh, Predators for 875000 Flames lock up Lindholm. Uh, Rangers sign Gilmore to one year. And uh, Vesey. And, and Vesey. And Vesey. That was a big one, too. Uh, here's my other thing. Uh, do you want to uh, do you want to go in with me and uh, buy forty nine percent of the Phoenix Coyotes? No, for five hundred five hundred mil. Oh, never mind. I thought it was just five hundred dollars. Huh. Never mind. I take that back. For yeah. five hundred bucks, I would buy forty nine percent of them. I could be like, okay, change the shit you're doing. Jose, you're playing. <laughs> exactly. We and uh, Datsuk and Pronger. Yeah, you're all in. Yeah, get in there, boys. Yeah. So, we need the ticket sales. Um, also, saying that uh, Tavares apparently stated that he would have stayed with the Islanders if Snow and Wait were not fired. My question is, again, for something like this, is it really worth saying at this point? Like, what does that really accomplish? I think it shows... I think it gives you an idea of where he's coming from and why he chose to make the change because there are certain things and certain dominoes that fell that made him feel a certain way to where a change was necessary. All right. Um, Because obviously, why would he leave the... Like, why would he leave the Islanders? Something would have to give. Um, Clearly, maybe... Like, a lot of people are suspecting, okay, maybe they don't have an an actual home arena necessarily right now. Uh, there's a lot of management uh, issues going on. And that seemed to get fixed when we got Lou Lamarillo uh, in as, you know... The GM. The GM. And then you got the new head coach who just won a Stanley Cup. Barry Trotz. The Trots. Yeah. Um, but then, when you're thinking about it, and you're like, okay, well, he already... Had a good relationship with the previous coach in GM. Um, and maybe that factored into it. Or maybe he didn't want to go into a new scenario again. I don't know. Like it, Maybe it just... A lot of people already didn't like the way he left the Islanders. Uh, maybe this gave him a little bit more of... A, okay, look. like This is why I'm le- I left. Um, you don't... Don't vilify me, but at least try to understand me. I don't know. Fair enough. Because I still think part of him, like, he also came out and said, like, look, Toronto's where I was born, so I'm always going to have Toronto in my heart, but I grew up and became a man with the New York Islanders in Long Island. So he wears both on his, like, yeah. So, I mean, I get it, but, I mean, I think at this point, just move on. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Thank God. I just I didn't think it was necessary to say that kind of thing, but I, I guess I. But maybe it. he thought he uh, owed it to the fans or the people who were yeah who followed him through the Islanders. I don't know. I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, oh. you'd, I guess we'd really have to ask him of why. Well, oh, uh, first, if if that's true. Well, because it is a report. John Tavares, you've heard it here first. Uh, if you want on the podcast, uh, just get a hold of us. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll have you on. We'll let you explain your side of the story. We won't be prejudiced. We'll uh, we'll just. You know, talk about. Uh, I a still think you should have took a discount and played for the Oilers because McDavid is way better than Matthews and Marner put together. So, just saying, you uh, really screw yourself on that one. Sure. Yeah, I think you kind of. Or, you know, play, played for like fifty bucks and played for the the Blackhawks. Yeah, or that's, you, that's about all I can afford. But I mean, it could have been on that team. And uh, you also could have joined the uh, Smoke and Toes uh, Rec League hockey team. I'm just saying. Um, could have said that I was your agent, and you would have gave me a lot of uh, the money you would have made to play there. Or you could have played for the custom team in HL18 that I created called the uh, Tri City Terroristers. Yeah, but you know what? He probably wouldn't have picked that team. He's probably going to pick Actually, any a, other team that you played. 
Actually, he's actually on that team, which yeah. is the funny part. <laughs> so is McDavid, too. Yeah. See? McDavid and Tavares. Lethal combination. It all goes back. And Dave's. And you and me, actually. It's a good, it's a good, good, good team. Wait, wait. What position am I playing? Defense. Why? Because that's what I'm playing as well. Okay, fine. Am I an offensive defenseman? Yes. Okay, good. Because because I'm very much defensive. Defense yeah, because I'm very offensive. So. I'm very. De- we don't even play like the traditional like offense defense. It's the three forwards in, like in deep. Then it's you, like probably just the top of the circles, and I'm just outside the blue line. So we're doing the three one one. Yes. Because I think we should just do the five zero. Just play like total five zero. Oh, eight. No oh. defense. Fuck, go, fuck defense. Just go eighties Oilers. Or uh, smoke and toast hockey. Um, commit to the goal, and then hope your goalie is committing to the save. Fair enough. I mean, your your defense is the goalie. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Uh, I mean, your defense has to be your best, uh, or your goalie has to be your best defender, right? Fair enough. So, just saying. And news. Um, the only thing I have for hockey, which is kind of really shitty to talk about, is Ray Emery's body was apparently found in Lake Ontario near Hamilton. Yeah. Looks like a uh, looks like an unfortunate drowning. Nothing uh, doesn't look like there's anything pointing to anything else. Yeah, supposedly he uh, was with some friends and decided to go on his own, from what I understand, and uh, went swimming around six a.m. and uh, resurfaced later in the afternoon after people said they couldn't find him. Mm-hmm. Very un- very unfortunate. Cause I'm always gonna remember Ray Emery as the goalie you never want to fuck with. Yeah, because he, he would kick the shit out of you. Yeah, used boxing as a way to get cardio in the off season right. and used it to his advantage. Uh, I will always from, fondly remember him as uh, the backup goalie in 2013, the one where he won the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah, and also won the William M. M. Jennings Trophy with uh, Corey Crawford. Mm-hmm. Uh, never. A really true number one goalie, but one of the best backups. I think one ever. of the best, yeah. And you know what? He would actually he did fairly well as a starter in uh, the struggling uh, Ottawa, Ottawa Senators. Senior. They're always struggling in Ottawa. Oh, absolutely. It's like they need us. Yeah. But not gonna do it. But no. they do need us. Not for free. No. Not for free. Money, 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 money. Uh, and we don't do it for a half sold out crowd. We're not like the Senators. We no. actually like. We need every. Full we need sell-outs. standing room only. We need every seat. Put those fifteen hundred. And we don't back want a standing room only just because they didn't put enough seats in there. Yeah, put those fifteen hundred seats in. And we then want s- standing room only because there's more people than the seats. Literally that are hanging, there. hanging off the rafters. Is now, what we want. We want to be able to pull the, the chairs outside of the ring and give it to the fans. And be like, look, take a seat because what you're going to see is going to be struggleicious. Yeah, you're going to lose function of your legs and your bowels because of how great we are. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, we, uh, could focus on wrestling. Uh, Backbreaker Media on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Podcast Player, fuck YouTube. We're on there, but fuck them. We should also get a Twitch account, just gonna say, because... I don't play video games online. I mean, if you do, then absolutely, no, let's do No, but do we it. have to do video games online? I don't fucking know. I don't know how it works. Um, I mean, I know to- uh, Tommy Twitch there. Tommy. Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy. Apparently, so get apparently, to Tommy, but it kind of so hardcore, I guess, goes on there. But I don't know how that works. But yeah, yeah we probably should look into that a bit. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, speaking of which, uh, Power Slam TV, Power Slam dot TV is five ninety nine a month. You sign up using Amazon Prime, you get a thirty day free trial, or iOS, Google Play, Roku, Chromebook, or on the website itself for a two week free trial. And if you want something more classic, something more, you know, back in the day. The formation of the struggle, or formation of tag struggle. You can uh, you can look up backbreakermedia.pivotshare.com and use tag struggle for a two week free trial, and it's also now five ninety nine a month. So for the price of the WWE Network in Canada, you can get both powerslam.tv and backbreakermedia.pivotshare.com to watch stuff as old as like two thousand twelve, I think. You know what? Sign me up. I'm already signed up using Tag Struggle. 
Well, of course. Why would you use another code when you have this one right there? Available to stick in your face holes. Yeah. And it, it's a little bit of all right. It is. It's struggleicious. And also, whatamaneuver.net. You can go to the Backbreaker Media page and get your retro WE or The Struggle OG t-shirts. More gear and merch. To Original come. gear is what OG stands for, by yes. the way. Original gear. More gear and merch to come. Somebody actually asked me why we call it OG, and I said, Original gear. Yeah. Somebody asked me, and I said, Because shut the fuck up, that's why. I mean, it, what? I mean, if we have more gear, it'll just be old gear, but. I mean, original gear. Or current gear, gear or yeah. CG. Well. <laughs> sure. And then if we get a lot of it, it'll be a current gear influx or a CGI. Shit we wear. Yeah. SWI. Uh, yeah. No, SWW. No. Nope. Silent Silent <laughs> I. <laughs> it's a swimsuit edition. Oh, God, I don't see anybody buying that one. <laughs> nope. Oh, dear I Lord. wouldn't even buy that. That'd be terrible. We don't even wear shirts when we wrestle. Why would people want to see us in a bathing suit? Because we're sexy. I'm only assuming that you and I would actually be in, like, the two-piece... No, we'd, yeah. we'd be in the we'd be in that sexy just playing slimy, in the sand, sexy one piece, uh, the red one from uh, Baywatch. That's Make, what we'd be making in. snow castles and then snow. Fuck, fuck that! Not not in that kind of cold. No. Sand castles, yes. Oh, so we're not doing an encounter, okay? No. Oh, okay. We're going on vacation for this one. Oh well, I mean, that was needed information. Yes. Just going to point that out. Um. So yeah. Now on to Extreme Rules. Yeah. Something else we couldn't really afford. Yeah. So something we, uh... Watched. You know you know what we couldn't afford? Our attention for this well, paper. Not entirely. It was a little bit of... Eh. I mean... Don't get me wrong. Let's start off at the very beginning. Pre-show number one. Andre Cien Almas with Selena Vega. Yeah. It's the Sin Cara. How is Sin Cara still employed? Uh, I don't want to be that guy that calls people out because I'm not there. It's you know because I'm not they haven't hired Rey Mysterio yet. But man, fucking botch mania on this match with that guy. Like holy shit. Well, I mean, Mexico. Like bro. don't get me wrong, Cien almost still got himself over, but just that's because he had Selena Vega. But yeah, Sin Cara is just yeah, and Almas is good. But anyways, yeah, so CNL almost defeats Sin Cara in a fairly one-sided affair. Yeah. Couple nice moves, though, in the match. Yes. I mean, a little interesting uh, back... Not really back and forth, but a couple interesting reversals. Yes. Um, I also very much like that Almas is deciding to uh, use the mask in his entrance from here on out. That's kind of nice. The tribute of going back to his roots, so kind of like that. Agreed. Um... And then we followed up with the second pre-show match, which was tables match. You know, Sanity versus New Day. And what I was excited for, which turned out to be kind of a dud. And I, honestly, I don't know what it was. Maybe these guys just don't have chemistry. They don't jive well. well I don't know. It just, it just I'm, I'm kind of... I'm going to yeah. go, go with three things right here on you. One, I don't think Killian Dane is being booked the same in WWE main roster than he was in NXT because he looked like he had way more jump in NXT than he did uh, so far on the main roster. Um, with that being said, I also am going to attribute this match to the fact that I think it's irony and maybe foreshadow that New Day is wearing thin on people and their attention span because they, I think, are being looked at now as more as entertaining acts, acts outside of the ring than being entertaining acts inside the ring. My, I guess, yeah. Um, also, Pancake Power really needs to be over. I enjoy it. I mean, if they're not giving me pancakes... I don't fucking care. They need to I hop their way on over here and give us some damn pancakes. They they are they're probably the reason why I hop is now I hop. That's why I said I hop. I know, but they're probably I hop now. 
After, my house. after Pancake Power, I the International House of Pancakes is now the International House of Burgers. Nothing. I refuse to believe that. Yeah. I refuse to admit I, it or acknowledge I blame, it. I blame New Day. Um, they stole all the pancakes so that IHOP now has to go on burgers. Or other breakfasts. Yeah, that's why I go French toast. Uh, then we go to the first match on the main card, which is the B team defeating Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. It was an incredibly fun match to watch. I it enjoyed was. this. I enjoyed this. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. Yes, it was good. The celebration after the fact was great. The, uh, the match itself was awesome. Celebration promo afterwards was great. Yes, it was. Um, so, yeah. They uh, were celebrating as we saw a clip of Roman Reigns walking towards the ring for his match saying, hey, they should, he should join the B team. Because they're the best. Yeah. B stands for best. That they did say the B stands for best. And it's true. Yeah. Simply um, the best. Next match. Better than all the rest. Better than anybody? Anyone I've ever met? I don't know everyone you've ever met, so I can't say there that. There we go. Uh, next match. Finn Balor defeats Baron Corbin. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't remember this match. That's because you went outside and played with your dog and stepped in poo. True story. Actually, no, that was the uh, cage match. Yes, uh, which is very very disappointing that I missed that. Watch it back later. It was fun. You also saw the bump of the missed the bump of the night. I saw a re recap. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but Finn Balor, Baron Corbin, I just. I mean, eh. Now, for a bald brother, in why didn't you give him your full attention? I don't know. I just didn't really care about this match. I'll be honest. I think Baron I, Corbin, you become a bald brother, in you need to step it up. I agree. Because Make Finn Balor's abs, they get attention. What are you Mike. bringing to the table, Mr. Corbin? Yeah. If that is your real name. Yeah. Bub. For someone who's a constable, gotta get their shit together. Gonna bust you down to fucking beat cops real quick here. Yeah. You're gonna be, you know, working, you know, you know, for the radars afterwards, Mr. Constable. Yeah. And you like them apples. Captain Snapchat. Yeah. You're going to monitor, you know, the boring unemployment line if you consider that performance good, because we don't. You're at gonna all. Be, you're going to become a security guard at a, uh, at a mall. Yeah, maybe. Rent-a-cop. Yeah, maybe you're going to be serving burgers at an IHOP. Well, that's just a really big fall from grace. Well, you know what? If he's not going to put on a good match... Likely, you've been warned. Yeah, I'm just saying, you heard it here first. Yeah, <laughs> uh, next match Carmella defeats Oscar to retain. I actually enjoyed this. I, I thought there'd be more interference, but just the way that things went, I enjoyed the finish. I just don't like the fact that Oscar is now not taken seriously at all. Why would she be? She lost once, now she doesn't matter. Yeah. God forbid if she was undefeated for 500 plus days. Now, I mean, if the whole idea was to put Carmella over as a babyface champion, do they really have to use Asuka in this situation? She was definitely not a babyface champion after that. Or sorry, a heel champion. Heel champion, yeah. yes. But, I mean... Um, the fact that they used the James Ellsworth in a shark cage, which I was like, didn't really care for before, but the fact that he kept trying to help her cheat, and then Asuka kept stopping it, and then he tried to get out, but ended up getting hung up, and then Oscar beat the piss out of him. I enjoyed that. That was fun. See, my here's my big thing about this whole fucking Ellsworth experiment again. I've already said, like, how I just don't get the fact of why he's back with Carmella. I'm going to go past that one. But you want to put attention to your women's match, correct? Women's Revolution. Big thing. It's one of two women's matches on the show. And your attention is more directed to the fucking moron who is male trying to get out of a cage. Yes. That is not a good way to make your women the most, like, the bigger attraction here. I agree. Um, so I think they actually... Clearly did somebody does not have any... I think they did a disservice to the match, to be honest, by having that stupid, stupid... Uh, stupid 
stipulation in there. Because if they really wanted one, why not do, like, I don't like a different stipulation altogether. Like, I don't know. Like, do a triple threat match, and then James Ellsworth can become a champ. You said you didn't have a chairs match on the show. Well, yeah, could have been that. Yeah, I agree. Um, moving on, next match was Shinsuke Nakamura's defeating Jeff Hardy to become the new United States champion. And this match was fuck. Oh, yes. It was a marathon. Seven seconds long? Six seconds, yes. Huh. Dick punch, followed by Before match start. Before the bell. Yeah, followed by match start, and then King Shasa, and match finish. Yeah. Um, and Following that, the match. Yeah, and then we got a celebration, and then we got uh, Randy Orton making his return, only to uh, double-leg Jeff Hardy and kick him in the groin. Stomp that dick. Yeah. Which, again, I haven't seen Raw or SmackDown yet. Because I've been rehabbing and in therapy, physical and mental. I watched Raw. SmackDown was and I not guess, happening uh, last night. Jeff Hardy's now saying that uh, he feels incomplete with that title and feels broken. Well, he's saying he feels incomplete and his heart is broken. I like it. He also called Shinscape more or less a coward for how he went about the win. I like it, though. Yeah. Um, the next match is the, the hashtag Maniac Stepped in Poo match. Kevin Owens defeats Braun Strowman. But I don't really call this a, you know, a win for Kevin Owens. Hey, who won the match? I guess technically Kevin Owens. Who said he was going to win the match? Both of us. Yes. Just saying that. By defeating. By the way, I want to go out and record. Oh, we'll go over it after the fact. But how many of these we called right? Like um, all of them. I think actually I would did. Uh-huh. I think so. Um. But yeah, so the match like I don't know if we did we actually call Roman Reigns losing. No, you're right. That might be one. That might be did. the only one. That might be the one we could. We originally thought this was whoever won this would be the number one contender. We thought that. Yes, which we we're apparently very wrong. Yeah, why, why would any why would a common sense thing happen when you're just gonna book the same match two weeks later? Yeah, or eight days, eight days later for that that match. Yeah. Anyways, uh. Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman. Kevin Owens got his ass kicked most of this match, but then ended up winning when he was almost escaped in the cage, but then got thrown off the top of it by Braun through the announce table. Yeah, voluntarily he was thrown off, um, which was kind of funny. Another way of, you know, okay, Kevin Owens just beat Braun Strowman in a cage match, but... He did. Braun Strowman still looks like a giant monster coming out of it. Looks because like a monster in the bank. Braun Strowman chose to lose the match, not Kevin Owens. Just beat him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. So, in a span of a month, Kevin Owens gets thrown off a ladder, twenty feet ladder, I want to say. Yeah. And then a twenty foot uh, cage. Um, His body's getting beat the hell up. So, I'm just saying, uh, anybody who says that guy's not in good shape. Hey, man, who's the last guy who's taken this much uh, punishment? Probably Mick Foley, who was also not exactly in great shape. Well, I'm just saying this guy is putting in them bumps on yeah. his bump card that his a lot bu- of other guys card. aren't doing. His bump card's filling up quick. Yeah. Um, next match, Bludgeon Brothers versus Team Hell No, which earlier in the night we saw the Bludgeon Brothers attacking them backstage and... When it came time for the match to start, Kane was not out there because his foot got smashed in the door. Which was a p- pretty safe way of saying, okay, we know Kane hurt his ankle before the show because he was seen in a walking boot when he announced Rusev Day on the Saturday in the Knoxville area. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, he didn't really do too much in this match. No. No came in about halfway through delivered a couple of you know choke strikes slams a choke slam couldn't do a, a tombstone yeah and then Daniel Bryan tagged himself back in took the pinfall yeah which I, it makes sense going into SummerSlam I can see Daniel Bryan going more singles route so yeah Blood Your Brothers get the win just like we called um next was uh, Bobby Lashley versus Roman Reigns which 
surprising. It wasn't the main event. It was kind of nice that it wasn't the main event. Yep. Um, uh, Bobby Lashley, I want to comment, took a disgusting bump to the outside. Yeah. Basically got like F or uh, attitude adjusted uh, or F U'd, depending on what area you're talking about, from inside the ring right to the floor. That was nice. He took that like a champ. And still ended up coming back and winning it. So Bobby Lashley won that one, which I don't think we called, no, because we thought it'd be Rowan With winning this. With a spear, this. which is weird. Which but... was funny because Rowan was setting up for a spear. Mm. Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder where they're going with this. Now they're facing off next week for the number one contendership, which why bother have that match? Yeah. Which we all thought was going to be the number one contendership match. But whatever, what do I know? Yeah. Um, match itself was all right, though. Uh, next match, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. And Mickey James and Natalia were also out there and also had uh, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey in the front row. Front row with uh, husband and somebody else. Travis Brown is her yeah. husband. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. But anyways. Some other rat. Uh, this was an Extreme Rules match. And eh, it was all right. I mean, It was what it was. It was, was what it was. The one thing. We won't say... A a lot of bad things about Alex Bliss in this podcast. No. The bitch needs to actually learn how to swing shit. Yeah, she was definitely pulling up a lot. Uh, Which I get. You don't want to actually, you know, physically hurt somebody unless you actually hate them. I get it. Yeah. Is that really true? But. Here's an idea. Do you fully hate Irish? Yeah. But you swang the fucking chair, didn't you? Well, I mean, he because he deserved it because of what he was wearing. He also didn't mean to hit him, but, I mean, still, it happened. Yeah. That's not the point. Anyways. Yeah, um, yeah it just... The kind of... That kind of took me... The fact that, too, is an Extreme Rules match, and Nia Jax basically refused to use anything. Yeah. That... I don't know. I did like the spot they had when they're on the outside, and Mickey James is pulling stuff out thrown into bliss she goes to swing and then I just you know catches stops throws it, in the ring. throws it in the ring and be like what else you got and they no, did that for I, I like that that but yeah. then actually use it you know it's, it's it's an extreme rules match which oh by the way going back one match prior to the Roman Reigns match from Bobby Lashley man talk about a clash of styles yeah they were just one was going like 1.5 the other one was going like 1.3 there were there's a lot of stuff that was slightly I mean, off it's almost you know, this is why you don't put a square in the circle hole. That's... Yeah. This is why you could put a cylinder in a circle. Yeah. A lot of different ways you can take that one. Vagina. I, I'm implanting, implanting it right now. Implying it? Well, yeah. Implanting. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, after the, after the Alexa Bliss match, which she retained, even though Ronda Rousey got in and started to do some ass kickery, um, AJ Styles versus Rusev with Aiden English. Yeah, that was a good match. I enjoyed that. Uh, one of the better matches in the night, I thought. Yeah, I, I would have uh, would have been okay if this was the main event. Even though it wasn't, I would have been okay with it. Yep. I'm actually really glad that it wasn't though, because the main event uh, I thought did really well. But um, yeah, Styles ended up uh, retaining. Um. Again, I've been pretty drugged up since getting home and doing rehab and going through well, all the physical therapy. Well, I mean, the finish where uh, Rusev had AJ kind of, you know, backpedaling, um, but Aiden English decided to expose a turnbuckle. Early in the match. Uh, earlier, uh, later in the match, but... Earlier than what this was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when AJ was kind of like, Backpedaling, he backpedaled into the corner with the exposed turnbuckle. Rusev ran in. AJ moved, m- moved took the buckle. Phenomenal forearm. One, two, three. Um, so Agent Aiden English kind of inadvertently screwed Rusev out of this. Yeah. So uh, Rusev did not become WWE champion because of a costly error by Aiden English. Yes. Which, it'll be interesting to see where this goes forward. Um, yeah. And the final, the main event, was the 30-minute Iron Man match for the Intercontinental title between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. 
which the way they played this out, it was good. I enjoyed it. For a half hour, oh, in the crowd in Pittsburgh, just taking over the show because, well, why wouldn't I? Yeah, apparently uh, there's a spot in the match uh, where Dolph Ziggler has Seth Rollins in a sleeper, and uh, you can hear him talk about the crowd. Oh, really? Um, where Dolph Ziggler's like, because they actually took the, uh, the clock off the main screen so the fans would shut up. But then they started doing it anyway. Um, so Dolph Ziggler was quoted saying, it's louder than when the clock was up. Or it's louder when they took it off. And then you just hear Seth Rollins, yeah, this is why they should have just left it up. Yeah. So it was actually really funny. For, for anyone who didn't see the match doesn't know what we're talking about, they had the half-hour time limit counting down on the Titan Drawn. And every time it got down to 10 seconds... Regardless of what minute it was, the crowd would count down when it got to zero, they'd all make the sound of a buzzer. Pretty much counting down like it was a Royal Rumble every minute. Yeah. Which, yes, it's funny, but it does kind of take away from the match a bit, because we were more laughing at that than watching the match. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's still really good. Uh, Drew McIntyre got kicked out partway through. Well, I mean, well, Seth Rollins got up, what, 3 nothing. Yeah. And the third fall was because Drew McIntyre was beating the hell out of him. Yeah. And a lot of people said, well, I think it was Coach who said, if Dolph Ziggler doesn't get two falls out of this, uh, that interference was for nothing. Which actually was one of the best points I think he uh, was made out of this because the whole idea is like Dolph Ziggler not only should get a fall because he, he could capitalize on it, but it also should get a second fall to neglect, or to neglect the, the fall that McIntyre just cost him. Yeah. So he got thrown out with that, and then we saw boom, boom, boom. Ziggler's able to capitalize on it, get up uh, and tie it 3-3, three, three, and, and then four, actually three. was able to go up 4-3, and yeah. then we saw Rollins tied up, which I think then Ziggler got up. Uh, no, it's, uh, he tied it up. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, he tied it up with like a minute left. And then he went and he hit the uh, the blackout yeah. with like six seconds left but couldn't crawl over in time and then ended up being tied. Yeah. And then they originally called it a draw, which would see that Dol- Dolph Ziggler would retain. But then out came um, Kurt uh, Angle saying that, no, we're going to do some overtime right now. And that's when... Uh, out from the crowd came Drew McIntyre again to distract uh, uh, Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler hit the zigzag one two three. So in thirty minutes and overtime of ten seconds, Dolph Ziggler wins to retain five four in a hell of a good match. Yeah, and for the second time in what seventeen years, the Intercontinental Title main evented a pay per view. What was the last time? Would be. Uh... 17 years ago. I think uh, that's what Ziggler said on Raw. Yeah, possible. So, uh, yeah. But, I mean, the Intercontinental title is really looking like the title on Monday Night Raw because a certain Universal Champion hasn't been showing up. But now, one of the big things coming out of the pay-per-view is Kurt Angle issued an ultimatum to Brock Lesnar and his advocate and associates that... If he doesn't want to come to an agreement on an opponent or show up or an, an opponent to SummerSlam or show up to Monday Night Raw the day after, he'd be stripped and then... Stripped naked. Yeah, and then Kurt Angle was about to strip him of the United uh, Universal title on Raw until Paul Heyman showed up, ultimately agreeing that he would defend the Universal title, which we saw two triple threat matches, one involving Elias, uh, Bobby Lashley, and Seth Rollins, which ended up being won by Bobby Lashley. Yes. And then the second one involving Roman Reigns, Finn Balor, and Drew McIntyre, which was won by Roman Reigns, therefore setting up a match this coming Monday Night Raw between Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, winner faces Lesnar at SummerSlam. Basically making the match that we just watched the night before yeah. a complete waste of time. Exactly. So, that's all we have to say about that. Overall, not one of their strongest pay-per-views, but, I mean, it was alright, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, moving on to other stuff in wrestling. Goldust had knee surgery. Uh, successful he knee had surgery. double knee surgery. So he's going to be gone for and a little bit. Dang had surgery on his shoulder, I bet, apparently. Yes, and they took a picture together in the hospital. They yeah. look all cute together. And they'll have, I'm sure they'll have wonderful children someday. Um, well, I mean, Goldust already does. Yeah, that's the point. Oh. Um, there's a bunch of... Uh, People that were named for the May Young Classic coming up in August. Yeah, one of them is Canadian born Nicole Matthews out of Vancouver, British Columbia. Yes. So uh, good for her. There's also Rhea Ripley. I have back had in. a couple matches with her. Against her or with her? With her, actually. Nice. Yeah. As a, she, she and I were on the same team. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Rhea Ripley is also back in again this year. Uh, Shira Io from uh, Shirai. Whatever. Same thing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the one from Japan, kind of a big name about. in the tournament, though. Whatever. Yes. Uh, then there's also names like Ginny Coulter, who I've never heard of. I guess she's from uh, England. The returning Caitlin. The returning Caitlin. Yeah. Uh, Diona Perazzo that we've been talking about finally uh, named as one of the. I think in it. your final is going to be Perazzo against Shirai in the final. You think so? And I think Perazzo wins this. I unfortunately, I think Caitlin's going to go to the final four. I think Nicole Matthews, honestly, I can see her first or second round exit. I think. I hope not, but I, I think so. Depends. I wouldn't be surprised. I think she's going to get a treatment just like the Sings in the Cruiserweight Classic. First round exit? Uh, well, 1-1, one, one, I believe. No, they both lost oh, first okay. round. But I wouldn't be surprised if they gave her a couple matches to see what she had. Fair enough. It all depends on matchups in this one. Yep. Um, I'm curious to see if they were, if they're gonna have a lot more of the UK women in this, just to showcase them, so then they could help with the NXT UK division. Yeah, I could see that because, from what I understand, Dakota Kai could be moving from NXT to the NXT UK division. Well, there we go. Oh. Um, and Hulk Hogan has officially been reinstated in the WWE Hall of Fame after a three-year absence, and, and apparently had to apologize to the WWE locker room prior to Extreme Rules. Now this, I thought, would have been more of a sincere way of him trying to get back in good graces until I heard the rumor that this was being shot for a WWE 24 episode. Ugh. And then we... Gotta make now, everything a fucking show. There's now multiple sources, one name being... Titus O'Neil, who's not supportive of this decision. I heard a rumor from I think it was Mark Henry saying that half of out of all the it's black personality, it's like it's split. And then New Day apparently doesn't think it's genuine yet, but once they feel it's genuine, we'll accept it and move on from the situation. Yeah. Yep. Just shows you that actions have consequences and words can hurt, etc. etc. Yeah. Um, um, I just think dude, this is why you gotta make sure you're not an idiot. And we're idiots, and we get away with it. No, well, that's because we're also not racist and sexist. That's true. And we don't say dumb things like Hulk Hogan did. That that is true. I mean, we say a lot of dumb things. We say a ton of dumb. But things. we also say dumb things with tongue in cheek to entertain other people. Yeah. No, so. no, at no point have we ever said things in, like that. We meant it. Ever. Yeah. Um, but we also give, and then and a lot of people would say, oh, you're just like about my opinion and why I don't think women should main event at WrestleMania right now. People are like, oh, you're sexist. Oh, but I have my uh, reasons for why I think it's the wrong timing. If, you know, you have a, the right women who show that they are a great match, it could be your best match of the night, I'm all for it. But right now, I just think they should be in a position where they deserve to be main event, not just main event because you think that's a good headline. Yeah. And I think this year would have been a headline. I think next year with Ronda Rousey is a headline. I don't think it's... Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte, I think, would be a headline. I think they're... That is a headline to say, oh, we're going to get names to watch it, but I don't think that's going to be looked at as one of your top matches on the card. And if you're making it look like a top match on your card, then you're asking probably a lot of people on your card to tone it down. And I don't think that's the right thing for them to do. I think the women should be put in a scenario where they work their asses off and earn that show-stealing thing. 
just like guys like Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon did in the ladder match, just like guys like Chris Jericho did in WrestleMania 19, so on With and Shawn so Michaels. forth. But yeah, but I mean, a lot of these guys are, a lot of these women should be given the opportunity to steal a show just like anybody else. Yeah. That was my argument. Uh, speaking of which, you know someone else who's trying to steal the show now? David Arquette is back in wrestling. Yes, and are, is it... Okay, who, who was saying? I think it was Joy Ryan uh, who said... Because somebody was calling him using the RKO or the Diamond Cutter an Arquetto. Yeah. But is it an Arquetto? Like... There's two ways it could be like, or sorry, it's it's like it's a pun on the like the cutter, so our keto, yeah. like so, or our cutto or whatever, or if it's an R cat O like R K O, because you have R cat. Either one works, right? Like, but you know what? Actually, watching a little bit, a little bit of it, he actually looked pretty damn good. I was very shocked. <laughs> I mean, last time we saw him was what like '99 in uh, WCW when he won the. Heavyweight championship and it was pretty brutal, but he actually. Wait, looks, wait, 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 you watch that? Watch back, yeah. Uh, later, not not at the time, but later on, yeah. Not gonna lie, that's pretty bad. really when they did that. I was like, whoa, it's gonna take a lot for me to watch this shit again. Yeah, but yeah, he actually looked not too bad. I would, uh, we, we might start seeing a little bit more and more. We'll have to wait and see. No, I mean, I saw the clip on Twitter and I'm okay with that. Yeah, as being enough. But you never know if he gets uh, if he keeps progressing, you might see him you know other places coming up like the stuff on the west coast, PWG bar wrestling stuff like that. <laughs> PW, uh, maybe. maybe you never know. Um, other big news is Ring of Honor New Japan have G One Supercard booked for April six, twenty nineteen, the day before Mania. Now the big story about this, it's in MSG. You yeah, know, that's interesting. This WWE, I guess, finally lost that fight, and MSG is hosting a different WWE, different wrestling show. Yeah. Um, so we'll wait and see, I guess, going forward, what that does. Well, and we also found out uh, who, well, the main event of Chris Jericho's Rock and Rager at Sea is. That is true. With the Alpha Club consisting of Chris Jericho and the Young Bucks. That's who uh, could either be the Y2 Jackson or the Bucks of Jericho. Yes. Uh, against the Bullet Club in the forms of Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, and Marty Scurll. I kind of wish that, uh, I kind of hope that they end up filming this or something because I would love to see that. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty good. They probably won't, but I kind of hope they do. Because that'd be, that'd be good. So, and the last bit of information we have is, or at least that I have, WWE apparently in 2020 is looking to have two WrestleManias. Like how they did the Royal Rumble and then the greatest Royal Rumble this year. They want to do two WrestleManias Here's in 2020. Why don't you just make your SummerSlam a WrestleMania? Yeah, I agree. Just you Call it SummerMania? Just make SummerSlam gigantic. It already is too big. I, they can make it bigger. I mean, that's I just know. what I'm saying. Like, I know. But that's the thing. Apparently they want to go... Over, I don't know if it's Saudi Arabia, but they want to go somewhere over like that, over in Europe, and do a big WrestleMania style thing. Like well, the they in the UK, one hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Or the Tokyo Dome, because that would be funny. Yeah, I agree. That or, would be really fun. Or Wimbledon. You know, go back to uh, well, Wembley Stadium, the ri- the one they had this. Uh, this no, no I'm talking stadium. literally in the middle of tennis matches, mm-hmm. taking it over, setting up the ring, and Wimbledon now belongs to wrestling. That would be funny. <laughs> That's just you catching yourself in a plunder. No. I mean, I said, I said it wrong at first, but now I think about it. That'd <laughs> actually be really funny. Suddenly now it's like, you know, we have uh, Rafael Nadal going to serve, and then, bah, gets to... Okay, it. out of nowhere. I'd be hilarious. All right before the Serena William is facing Venus William. You know, Sphere! No, you know who interrupts? Adam Cole, baby! Yeah. And then they both beat the shit out of him, because that'd also be funny. Yeah. And then he just gets, like, served with balls and it's like, back head and... <laughs> served. Back. And he gets served. I see what you did there. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, that, that's all I got. Ooh. Uh, you know who would also be great? If, wow. uh, uh, the Queen of Spades also got a couple aces her way. Yeah? That's a suck. Uh, yeah. tennis reference right there. <laughs> T- tennis. Tennis and mm-hmm. wrestling or and such. brother got no love. Uh, yeah? Uh, uh yeah. Uh, 
And then Enzo would come back and show his poo emoji and then get deuced. Yeah, because that's also a thing in tennis. No, that's too far. Or, no, no, wait, he would go to court. Uh, yeah. yeah, very good. That's better. That's or, better. or Coke, no matter what. Uh, yeah, fair enough, yeah. Um, that's all I got for uh, for this week, bud. I think that's all I got, too. Um, all right. So uh, where can we catch you? Continually rehabbing no. and going to you, uh, physio you're and You're still not medically cleared. No. I actually did get medically cleared about two days ago. I'm actually, for the first time and, well, since the incident, I'm actually not feeling terrible. I'm feeling great, but I'm not feeling terrible. You're still uh, medically cleared to drink, which is a good thing. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Well, they're not going to stop you from doing that. Right. That's part. That's part of my rehab. I mean, well, I mean, that's. I mean, makes my uh, makes my neck and back feel actually not terrible. Right. When you're drunk, you feel no pain, and that's better than being sober and feeling pain. Yeah. I in, agree. In the words of uh, alcoholics, that is. Um, yeah. Among others. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not doing anything until CWC. Which, Which is when? The 28th of July. I might, uh... Where I have a tables match against uh, Jude Dawkins for Ooh, the CWC the Championship. I might, uh, I might come with you. Yeah. Just uh, take the show in and uh, just, just kind of well, watch you, one. You time. are trying to get cleared for that show. Well, hopefully. So, we'll I mean, but, I mean, we can't really... There's uh, no timetable on if that's going to happen or not. Yeah. Uh, probably going to be a game time decision. At best, and it all—it honestly all comes down to whether MPW management clears me or not. So. Well, it's not even MPW because it's really a CWC. Well, can yes. medically clear you because at this point now we're in different scenarios where CWC has to clear you for CWC shows. MPW has true, to clear but I mean, if CWC clears me, but MPW feels slighted or whatever, then they might not clear me for a while longer because of that. Well, I mean that's. Well, I mean, Who knows? but at the end of the day, I mean, it is CWC that makes the final decision for their shows. That's true. But, I mean, this could also alter your plans for other shows. Yes. If you were to do something irresponsible. <laughs> when have I ever done that? No, I'm, I mean, I just have to be uh, politically correct here. Oh, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, so, with that being said, I think we are coming to a end. This is the end. Yeah, the bitter end. My friend. Um, so, yeah, we are Tag Struggle. We are two halves of Tag Struggle. Yeah. And we're double real? And we are a lot of all right and spectacular. Yeah, right. I think we're double spectacular now. Yeah. I think. Double vision. I think now that because it's just Tag Struggle. Just, just the, the two, two of, of us. us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. I think now we're, we have doubled in our uh, realness, our spectacularness, and, and our, our li- little bit of all rightness. And our struggle Yeah, our struggle Yeah. Why was I able to say that without a problem? Because I'm drunk. Uh, fair enough. Um, so, yeah. And because we are tech struggle and we're double ev- everything, we are double out. Double deuces! Hey, Chess. When your heart's pounding out of your chest, you can feel the lips shaking as you're running out of breath.